Okay, today we're going to learn how to combine movie clips and still images in a Photoshop document and come up with a nice movie. We're going to learn how to trim the, the video clips and we're going to also add some motion to the stills. So to start off, what I do, I make a folder, put all my assets in that folder. When we make a movie with Photoshop, we need to have the film clips and the Photoshop document in the same folder so that Photoshop can refer back to the movie clips. All right, so to get my movie clips in the Photoshop documents from Bridge, I'm going to filter out everything except my clips. I'm going to select these three movie clips, go to Tools, Photoshop, Load Files into Photoshop Layers. Now, at the same time, I already did that. So let's jump over to Photoshop. Here we go. So they come in as their own separate video layers. Now what we want to do is, uh, in a minute, we're going to make a video group out of these. So this way they all come in uh, one after another. To do that, I can just select the three layers, either in the timeline or in the layer panel. Click on the little arrow here and say new video group from clips. This creates a video group and you can see all our videos are one after another. Now they're not in the order I want them to be so we can change the order. We can do it over here in the timeline. For example, I want this guy to be first. So I can just click and drag. This will come to the beginning and now the other one oh, didn't do it. Try it again. There we go. This one comes to the beginning and now this one moves over. You can also change the order in the layer panel too. So for example, I also want this movie to be second. So I can just drag it down in the layer panel and my timeline has been reordered. Let me collapse my timeline a little bit by moving the slider here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to trim these movie clips. Now also, if you don't see your timeline on the bottom here, I'm using the Motion Workspace, or you can just go to Window and select Timeline. Okay, uh, let's go to this guy here. Now, I don't want my movie to start off like this. I'll bring my cursor to the beginning clip here, and I can click and drag. I see a nice little preview there. Let's move this along to, say, around there. Looks good. Uh, let's check the end. I'll move my playhead to the end. Well, I don't want that either. Also, I want to shorten it a bit. All right, that looks good. Let's try the next one. This one here, we're going to, I want to get rid of all this stuff in the beginning here. I'll do the same thing, bring my cursor to the beginning click and drag, watch my preview. That looks good. Let's check the end. Oh, no, it doesn't look good. Here we go. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna trim this out too. Click the other side. Bring it down. I don't want to see those black bars. All right, good. Let's check the last one. Yeah, so this starts off not too good. Let's get rid of that. Okay, that looks good. Let's check the end. Now, with this particular clip, actually, I like the beginning. And I like the end, the very end. I want to get rid of the middle. So in this case, we're going to split this clip. I'll bring my cursor to where I want to split the clip. Okay, I want to split it right over here. I'll move my playhead to where I want it to be and click on the scissor. So now this gets split into two smaller clips. This one here, I'll just trim out all this stuff until it gets almost to the end. All 
All right, like that looks good. The next thing I want to do is I want to bring in some still images. I want to move my playhead to the end of my group here. I could do that by hitting the end key. The home key will bring your playhead to the beginning of your movie. Also, it's a good idea to turn on your keyboard shortcuts by going to this menu here and selecting Enable Timeline Shortcuts. What this will do for you, for example, if I want to bring my playhead to the beginning or the end of a clip, I can select the clip and by using my up and down arrow keys, up arrow key brings me to the beginning of the clip, down arrow key brings me to the end of the clip, and also my left and right arrow keys will move your movie frame by frame. All right, let's go to the end of my movie. I'll hit the end key. And now I'm going to bring in some stills. I'm going to click on the video group here in my layer panel. Uh, now let's bring in the stills. I'm going to use mini bridge. Here's my stills are selected. Now when I drag them in, they're going to be positioned outside the group, which is okay. They come in as smart objects, so now I can scale them. Get rid of that bottom part there. Uh, when you're done, you have to double click, hit enter, or hit the check mark. Next one shows up. This one, I'll hold down the alt and the shift, so this way it grows from the middle. That looks good. Enter. Here's the last one. Crop that out. Hit enter. Okay, let me bring back my timeline. Now we have to position these where we want them in the movie. Uh, so I want this guy here. This one is going to start off my movie. So I can select it in the, in the layer panel. Let's enlarge this a little bit. We'll get to see little thumbnails of the images. Makes it a little bit easier to work. I'll bring this guy to the front of my video group. There we go. Next, I want this one here. This is going to go before this clip here. So basically, we're going to start off with a still that turns into a movie. And this one will go over here. All right, let's bring my playhead to the beginning. We're going to take this still. This still is static right now. We're going to give it some motion. So we can do that automatically. Click that little arrow, go to motion. Let's do a pan and zoom. Click outside, and there we go. Well, let's see what we got. I can just scrub along. All right, this is going to be good. Let's go to our next image. This one, I think I'm just going to do a pan. Click pan. Let's see what we got. Oh, we have to make some adjustments here. So this is good. If I click on the clip here, and I flip down this arrow here, we see our keyframes. So this motion, you can actually do it manually. Photoshop gave us a little help. Let me go to the beginning keyframe here. So to be sure I'm in the right spot, I'll click this arrow here. There we go. Position this where we want it. Well, it looks like we have to do a little enlarging. Control T. Go to the last keyframe. Oop, first we have to double click. Go to the second keyframe. And now put our image where we want it to end. So it looks like we also have to do some enlarging here. Control T. Double click. Let's see what we got. Oh, 
Okay, it's going to be good. Okay, let's go to the next image. This one will also put a pan and zoom, I think. Pan and zoom. Let's see what we got. Okay, it's going to be good. All right, now what we got to do is we're going to put in some transitions. But also, before I forget, I want to turn off the audio for the individual clips so we could put in a soundtrack later. So I'll click on each movie. At the end of the movie, there's this little arrow. Click on the audio, mute audio. Go to the next one, mute audio. Go to the last one. Oh, actually, there's two. Mute audio. Mute audio. Okay, now we're going to bring in some transitions. Let's go to the beginning. Uh, so between this clip, between this still image and the movie, we're going to put a crossfade. Your transitions are over here. I can just click and drag. Here's crossfade. Click and drag between the two clips. Pretty much I'm going to do the same thing for all of them. Uh, let's make this two seconds. You can come back and you can adjust it by right clicking on it. I'll type in a two. Get my crossfade again. Come over here, do the same thing over here. So I'm just doing this real quick. Uh, now this last one I probably want to change because this is a very small clip. This one I think I'm going to change to one second. I also want my movie to fade out at the end. So I'll go back to my transitions and I'll say fade with black, put it on the end here. Also in the beginning, I want it to fade in. So I'll also do fade with black. And now what we can see what we got here. I'll bring my playhead to the beginning. I'm also going to turn off the audio temporarily, even though we did mute it anyway. Now, when I hit the space bar to play it, the frame rate is not going to be quite right. If you see on the bottom here, you can see the frame rate is only like two point something uh, frames per second. So the first time it's going to go through, it's going to be very slow. So we have to wait for it to render properly. See the solid line here? Uh, this is rendering. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to let it go through once, and then we'll see it a much faster view. Okay, even though I went through one shot already, it's still, my view is very slow. We can speed up the view by going to our drop down menu here and selecting allow frame skipping. This might be a little bit jumpy, but it lets us see our movie and close to uh, the, the proper timing. So there we go. So it's zipping along, but you can see it's skipping frames. This solid line is fully rendered. These are where it's been skipping. Uh, but when we render this out, it's going to be fine. Uh, I'm going to stop it by hitting the space bar. One last thing we want to do is we're going to put in some audio. So with CS6, we can put in a new audio track. I'll come over here, click the arrow, click Add Audio. Here's my audio file. Click Open. Comes in. It comes in as much too long. Let me reduce the size here with the little slider. And I could trim this down to the end of my movie here. There we go. Uh, now also what we can do is we probably want this to fade out. We can make it fade out. So I'll do like 
six seconds Oop, not 60 and we can also make it fade in so I'll also do like six seconds this way it doesn't come in so uh, abruptly okay let's see what we got I'll turn the audio on bring my playhead to the beginning hitting the home key and I'll hit the space bar to play Okay, sounds good. I don't want to play too much audio, so I don't have trouble with copyrights when I put it on YouTube. All these images I shot myself, so there's no trouble with that. So pretty much that's it. The only thing left to do is to render it. To render it, we can click this little arrow down here. We can go to the drop down menu over here. Go to render video, or we can go to file export render video so either one takes you to the same spot here we go uh, I'm going to for first we give it a name so I'm going to call it this is the Monterey Aquarium Monterey uh, decide where you want to put it this is going to be for the web so these this is kind of a small video anyway so I'm going to use the format h.264 where do I want to put it? This is where I'm going to do. I'm going to do a YouTube video. There's some other settings. You can just pick out high quality, medium quality, or low quality if you like. Here's the preset. And we're ready to go. Uh, actually, in my case, my document setup is this anyway. If I say document setup, oh, actually, no, this is a small movie. I'm sorry. It is 640 by 480, so I'm going to leave it at that size. Preset frame rate, I'm going to put it at the document frame rate. So it's a good idea not to mess with this if you don't have to. If you do mess with it, you can use, you should use an even multiple of the frame rate. So this is all set up. And then I just click render. Let me click render, and then I'm going to hit the pause key. Okay, so here's my movie rendered. Here we go. Okay, so that's it. Looks good. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.